Alrighty guys, welcome to the new Red Beard Ops workshop, and it is huge. Well, that's right, we decided to move. We're going to be moving to a new location, and that location just so happens to have a beautiful shop attached to it. So you see me here loading up all of the equipment onto my buddy's trailer. I went ahead and pretty much got everything on here when it comes to the boxes and things that I could lift by myself for our first load. Now everyone knows moving can be a massive pain, but we were lucky to have my parents come in town and help us out. My dad has a trailer that drops all the way to the ground, and that is what we use for most of the large equipment. This blocking method here we used numerous times throughout our move just so that these pieces of equipment wouldn't roll around on the trailer during transport. When my parents came over they also brought my hydraulic press which I built in high school and has been sitting out in the weather for about 10 years now. I just haven't had the space in my shop for it but now that has changed and we will be employing this in future videos to hopefully make some really cool Damascus and who knows what else, having a press doing blacksmithing work is a massive advantage. This thing's super heavy, it's made out of four x four square tubing that's about a quarter inch thick. Down the road, I plan on doing a full restoration video of this hydraulic press, and I hope to get it back up and running soon, so stay tuned for that. Now this footage coming up is a few weeks later, once everything was slowed down a little bit from our move, I was able to start organizing all of the shop boxes and tools in the shop. So right now the major goal was to get everything off of the middle of the floor there and put everything into the shelving units and the built-ins in the back of the shop. I have a lot more space than I really need in this situation so right now I'm not really sure where everything's going to land but I just wanted to get it out of the way. One of the items I wanted to get out of the way was this 100 pound heavy bag and I would highly advise no one to do this because this was pretty dangerous and there were a few touch and go moments when trying to get this thing up into the attic. I probably should have got someone else to help me out doing this, probably someone up in the attic to pull it up, but I was in a hurry and uh, this is why women live longer than men. So after I got the majority of stuff off the floor, I decided I wanted to move up the shelving unit that was left behind by the previous owner. There were a few reasons I wanted to move this shelving unit up. First of all is I wanted to have a little bit more space above my equipment that I have against that wall. But secondly is that I want to build a grinding room over to the left hand side of your screen and I need clearance above my head in that grinding room. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to kind of frame something up under these shelves at this point. Once I got the shelves moved up, I'm gonna be moving my workbench over into the corner. Now this steel workbench has been my main workbench in all the videos you've seen up to this point. I'm pretty sure I built this guy back in 2010 with my MIG welding machine when I first got it. Now one thing about this workbench is that it's not perfectly level with the ground and I think I'm gonna to have to add some leveling feet in the future. I also think that it will be morphing from my everyday workbench to the stand for my mini mill. I'll be bolting my mini mill to this bench because it just so happens to be the appropriate height. I think I will also be adding on to the left of this bench with an additional bench for my lathe. So it'll be one long steel workbench with two different heights, one for the mini mill and one for the lathe. So that's kind of what I'm thinking through right now. I think I'm going to put leveling feet on all of them. There'll be six feet in that scenario and that's going to be a welding project that's probably coming up on my channel in the coming weeks. So here you see me just getting some of this equipment against the wall. I think I'll end up having an island in the middle here uh, across from this equipment on the wall so that I can maximize my space. But We'll see how that stuff moves around. So every good YouTuber needs to have solid Wi-Fi. I have a mesh system in my house that has three nodes and I wasn't getting the greatest service out in my detached shop. So I was getting download speeds of around nine to 10 megabytes per second with the three node mesh system. So I decided to buy another node to install into my shop. So this is how you do it, it's pretty simple. You go to the plus button up here, you add a new deco node, you go find what version you have, which in my case is the M5, 
then you plug it into the wall and wait for a blinking blue light. So you plug it in, you'll get a yellow light, and then you wait a little bit while it's starting up, you get a blinking blue light, and then you just hit the uh, you know deco LED light is blue button, and it will connect this fourth node to my three node system. Once it's all connected up, you can label the nodes where they are. So in this case, it's in the shop. And then you can go on the app and see where all your nodes are and how healthy their connections are. So I am new to these mesh systems, but uh, for the amount of square footage that this thing covers, so far it's been doing a darn good job. So here is a little holder for it. I'm going to be plugging it into the wall with this holder so that you don't have a bunch of cords laying around. So after I got this guy installed, I went from around nine to 10 megabytes per second in my shop to 30 to 40. I've had speeds up to 40, 45, but on average it's normally between 28 and 30 megabytes per second. The plan I currently have for my provider is a 200 megabyte per second plan. As y'all saw, I have a bunch of welding projects coming up and in an attempt to not work on the ground as much as possible, I purchased this clutch welding table. Uh, they sell direct on Amazon and they also sell via Northern Tool. So I've heard that this thing's pretty good for the price as far as the reviews go and I look forward to trying it out. It comes with all these clamps and attachments so I'll have fun trying to you know work with these fixtures and see if I can make some nice square welds. Also my wonderful wife got me these squares for Father's Day from Fireball Tool. I've seen a lot of videos of these guys uh, being used and apparently uh, they're pretty nice to have. So these are the aluminum square set from Fireball Tool and I'm really looking forward to using them. Alrighty guys, that sums up the shop intro. As you can see, I have a ton of things to build, fix up and organize. If you wanna follow along with my progress, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and consider liking this video as well. Until next time, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.